Hello everyone, and welcome back to our universe. Today, we'll be looking at the biography of Johannes Kepler. Johannes Kepler was born in 1571 in the Roman Empire, but with German nationality. He was a sickly child and his parents were very, very poor. But with his intelligence and his determination, he was able to acquire a scholarship at university. There, he was introduced to the ideas of Copernicus, and this somewhat delighted him and wanted to find even more about the subject. He studied astronomy and the Copernican theory. And when he finished his studies, he was appointed as a professor in astronomy. In the next couple of years, he would study the planets and their motions, and believed that he discovered a relationship between the planets. The publication of this theory gained him a friendship with two of the greatest astronomers of their days, Galileo and Tycho. At this time, Kepler was married, and he was soon to be invited by Tycho to become his assistant in Prague. But a few months after Kepler joined him, Tycho died in 1601. He inherited Tycho's post as an imperial mathematician when Tycho died. Kepler completed the lunar tables upon which Tycho had actually worked on. Kepler selected Mars as one of his test objects, because he wanted to find the relationship between various objects in the solar system. After nine years of work, he published his results and found a first and second law of planetary motion. These first two laws of planetary motion actually showed that the orbits of the planets around the Sun were not circles, they were ellipses. Kepler also discovered the law of equal areas in the second law of planetary motion. This is where you draw an imaginary line from the Sun to any planet that sweeps out equal areas in equal amounts of time. This is very useful if you want to calculate the orbit of the planet. This is one of the first times a scientist has actually published data that is actually replicated in time and also is surprisingly accurate to the theory. This is what we call the scientific method today. Kepler would then return to Germany where he successfully defended his mother against the charges of witchcraft. Then in 1619 he published a paper which would describe his third law. This law describes that the squares of the times of the planets require to make a complete revolution about the Sun. And this must be in proportion to the cubes of their distances from the Sun. The laws of Kepler are the basis of all the orbits in space and are one of the foundation stones in astronomy. He then went on to produce another paper in astronomy in 1621. This would be his most influential work and discussed all the heliocentric astronomy in a systematic way. He then went on to produce the Rudolphine tables. These included calculations that used logarithms and provided perpetual tables to calculate the planetary motions and positions in any time in the past or the future. Kepler used these tables to predict the transits of Mercury and Venus on the Sun, but he did not live long enough to witness these events. Johannes Kepler died in Regensburg in 1630 at the age of 58 but his grave was demolished within two years because of the Thirty Years' War. He was frail of body, but he was robust in mind and spirit, and kept very honest about his data and used a very good scientific method to prove them. So, I hope that's given you a good insight into the life and the achievements of Johannes Kepler, and also a little bit of fundamental information on planetary motion. And as always, if you've enjoyed the video, click the like button. And if you've really, really, really enjoyed it, click subscribe. Thank you for watching.